Uh, yeah, how's it going, everyone? Once again, this is Jose Trujillo, world's living, world's greatest living artist, worst living artist, <laughs> worst <laughs> worlds. <laughs> so, I wanted to show you a little painting here by uh, Van Gogh. Check it out. And this one's called uh, View of the Sea at Schwevingen, something like that. Schwevingen. Look at the brush strokes on that. This was done on oil and paper. And then it was put on cardboard. Isn't that crazy? It's like a little uh, plain air, I guess. It's 13 by 20 inches. Not that big. But, uh, I mean, considering other, other of his works, right? The other oil works. But the reason I wanted to, to make this little video is to kind of shine some light on, on the type of artist this guy was, you know? He understood. A lot of people say that he didn't, that he painted like a, like a, you know, like an infant or something like that. But he understood what he was doing. He knew what was going on. And uh, that's probably the FedEx guy out there. My dog's going bananas. He understood what he was doing. And I think he was giving us a little, a little uh, feeling you know, of what he was seeing. I think that's really special. Yeah. It looks a little gray. It was a little gray, a little, uh, you know, just... <laughs> My dog's all locked up. <laughs> no, no, not this one. This one's like running outside the halls, trying to uh, scare the the postman, I guess, or the FedEx guy. So, anyways, the isolated figures, I mean, even though they're, they're, there's a, a cluster of figures, like right here, this ladies, and then over here, this, this, I guess, fishermen, you know, on the side, it shows uh, sort of an isolation. <laughs> Aunt Danny says, uh, my FedEx dude brings dog bones. <laughs> I like that. Smart, smart FedEx guy. But you see, it's, it's, it's isolated. I mean, look at the vastness, because this is a very uh, vertical, I mean, not vertical, horizontal piece. And and he put the figures also, well, of course, in the forefront, right? But uh, composition-wise, I think it's very, uh, definitely very minimalist. And, and I could see some 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 trend with uh, Eugene Baudin, the, the, the Monet's mentor. I don't know if, if, if that was a trend that he created and just people kind of followed. From what I understand, he was like a like a trendsetter in uh, during that time with that new style of painting, where, where there was this uh, sort of vastness and then and then isolated figures. And the figures look like they're together, but they're not. They're all isolated. There's something separating them. You know, it's either of course space right here, the boat, and then the these two figures right here are separated almost by the by the horse or the little donkey, whatever that is, the mule and the and the bolt. I think that's pretty cool. It's just the way the feeling of there is people, but there's an isolation as well. I think uh, as an artist, that's what I get out of this. Of course, I don't I don't I'm not trying to dissect the painting from a from a academic point of view, but from an artist, you know what 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 I feel from it and what, um, if I were in his shoes, maybe, what I would be seeing as a painter. I really dig it. 
the colors, the contrast of the colors are also using that that short, sort of uh, ochre uh, yellow and the gray. I think that that makes a really it's it's almost it reminds me a bit of of um, uh, Rembrandt's brushwork, but Rembrandt of course used that brushwork and created you know very uh, realistic pieces, but he uses this brushwork to to create a I don't know more of a it's not even it's not even impressionistic it's it's. It's a little different, a lot different, actually. You know, it's a lot different. It's not. It's not the, the impostel used in the waves. It's almost uh, trompe l'oeil, I think, or a little bit, a little bit uh, decor. Maybe even reminds me a little bit of of, of uh, Turner, William Turner. I mean, I'm sure he had all these influences, whether whether it was written or not. I mean, artists were traveling all over the place and, and leaving artwork behind, and and people mimicked, you know, the, some of the masters that were creating artwork during that time, and and on and on and on. So things got passed. It also reminds me a bit of the pieces by by Degas, some of the earlier pieces by Degas that have this almost uh, classical. Um, storytelling it's definitely a really cool piece i dig it a lot this is view of the sea at uh i, I hope i'm pronouncing it right shivin Green. uh i probably slaughter that but whatever it's the painting we're looking at <laughs> not my pronunciations so there you guys have it i hope my little spiel on this little fine painting was uh, a little comforting, a little cool. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. I'm gonna get back to painting now. <laughs>